All eyes were on Weston McKinney this weekend as Schalke visited Bayern Munich. We'll tell you how he did next on Americana Abroad. Welcome to another weekend roundup of all the Americans in the Bundesliga. I'm Ian Joy alongside Jovan Karofsky and Alexi Lalas. Match day 21 was all about one game and one man. Weston McKinney and Schalke visited Bayern. McKinney, albeit in a losing effort, with a strong performance for the Royal Blues. Yes, not too bad at all. Shalkov asked him to fill the many roles, but I was really impressed with his performance, guys. Well, I think ideally this is the best position for him, playing alongside Rudy as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And you see his, his skill, what he can do. He drives forward, makes a nice pass in for the equalizing goal. Always a tough place to play at Bayern Munich, but he shows his qualities. Look, I know it's a team game, but when you're playing against Bayern Munich and you are Weston McKinney playing for Schalke, uh, it's good to come out of it, even though your team lost, as being a player that did things, that created things. And he did it in multiple ways, whether it was set pieces, you see him on the dribble here, beat to multiple players, laying off the rock, something should have come with it. If he had scored this, it would have been off, uh, offside, but he yeah. was always involved. And as we've mentioned, he's played multiple positions. I think he was much more comfortable, comfortable against the Bayern Munich team, even though they lost. Jovan Karofsky, we love watching the Americans in the Bundesliga. Not all of them are starting right now, but Weston McKinney continuously is in the starting 11 for Tedesco. Why is it? What qualities is it that he brings to that team? Why is he always on the, the starting 11? I mean, first, he's, he works very hard. He has a great engine on him. He's versatile. He can play multiple positions. So if you're Tedesco, you can play him as a, a midfielder, as a holding midfielder. He plays off the front as well. And you see in the clips there, he has a lot to his game. I mean, in corner kicks, set pieces, he gets up really well, which surprised me. Um, so as a coach... He has a lot of tools you can use. He's fearless, too. Uh, he'll take players on. I think the, um, the pressure of the moment, the pressure of the environment, of the situation, it's not that he doesn't recognize it and respect it, but I think there's certain players that feed off of that. He's got a great personality, as, yeah. as we know. And, uh, and I say this with all due respect, it's something that I love, a, 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 an ego and almost a beautiful arrogance about him, and I, I want him to mine that. Once, you, once you're able to harness that, on a consistent basis, you can be incredibly effective using it as fuel. He wants to be at this high level. He wants to have opportunities. He wants to be this, in the spotlight. And when he does, more often than not, he does things that make you go, hmm, interesting. It's almost as if that arrogance is bringing confidence yeah. within his it's, game. It's well. a good thing. It's not a bad thing. That's a credit to Tedesco. OK, let's take a look at who else suited up for the Americans. A fairly quiet weekend overall, but John Brooks was heavily involved in Wolfsburg's 3-3 draw in Freiburg. Bobby Wood able to celebrate Hanover's first First win in two months, while Tyler Adams and Josh Sargent also saw a few minutes off the bench. Once again, no Christian Pulisic this weekend, though. He played and scored a goal in Dortmund's midweek cup loss to Werder Bremen. What a great game that was. Let's get back to John Brooks. Wolfsburg had the lead three times in, in Freiburg. Difficult place to go play. But John Brooks won't remember this game too fondly for his own personal performance, Lex. He sort of let himself down a couple of times. And look, we're, we're picking on him to a certain extent, but that's kind of what we do at different times. This is not a good look. And if you're a center back, you, you're going to take certain risks, but if they don't work out, oftentimes because of where you lose the ball and the situations that you lose the ball, it can be incredibly devastating, as we saw here. Now, here's another play, player uh, uh, ball into the box you got to find a way to play through this. You don't get a great clearance, but it's still alive. And I know it might hurt your big toe or whatever's going on right there, but you got to find a way to deal with that pain for the next couple seconds and get that ball out of pressure. Disappointing to see a performance like that from John Brooks, but again, he's another player who's consistently playing well for Wolfsburg, and another point picked up on the road for Wolfsburg. That's 20 points across the season. They're the third highly collected points away from home this campaign. You're impressed with him as well. Yeah, Bruno Labbadia has come in and, and did an amazing job. Brooks has formed a partnership there at center back position. Yeah, he didn't have his best performance, but he's been consistent in, in having a solid group, solid defensive unit. And on the road, you have to be able to defend, and they've done that this year. I bet you Greg Borhalter's watching Alexi. He's fine. He's not going to worry about a couple of uh, missed clearances or a, a loss of a ball. The guy's still quality, and I think he's still going to figure into Greg Borhalter's future as one possibility from a center back position. All right, I love it. Here are the Americans you can see in action next weekend on Saturday. A doubleheader on FS2. Weston McKinney and Schalke host Freiburg, followed by Hertha Berlin versus Josh Sargent's Werder Bremen. You can catch Tyler Adams and Leipzig on Fox Soccer Match Pass. And closing out match day 22, a little Monday Night Fußball. Nuremberg host Dortmund and Christian Pulisic on FS1. Until next time, auf Wiedersehen.